Oh, the time you were governor of uh, Kano State, what did you do to include women? And presently, what are you going to do if you become the president of Nigeria to ensure we have an increase in women's um, representation? Uh, also, um, I need to take one <laughs> so that I can allow Miss Faith to also ask a question. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. My name is Faith Mwadishi. I represent the civil society. I used to be on the board of the international EITI. My question has to do with the economy. Um, we know that we have four refineries in Nigeria with a nameplate of 445,000 barrels per day. But in recent times, these refineries have produced zero barrels per day. And we know also that the cost of fuel subsidy has risen to over 900% on a monthly basis. What, sir, will you do differently in addressing the oil subsidy question? Because right now, as we speak, people are on the streets buying petrol at 500 naira a barrel, I mean, a litre. People don't go to work. People sleep at the filling stations. And yet, we are right. a giant oil-producing country. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Very <clears throat> task. Those are your final questions, and you have just a minute to answer. Okay. <laughs> um, Women, you see, like I said, the, our biggest constituency are youth and women, especially in areas that people know us very well. I can say in northern Nigeria today. Now, we handle the issue of women as a package based on my personal experience. When I was governor in 99, even in 2011 in Kano to 2015, we wanted to make appointment, but definitely we need people who can handle that appointment to the extent that we had to go to university to, that's, that's what is happening in our own part of the country. Maybe it's different, but I'm telling you the reality of what happened in Kano. We had to go to university and ask the vice chancellor or somebody to recommend something. So what we did was to educate, that's the first thing. And secondly, even encourage them to go to tertiary institutions, not only in Nigeria, even abroad. And this is the point to thank the husbands, the parents of those young men who were able to take those opportunities. Now I can tell you our situation has changed in Kano based on our own efforts, based on what we have done to make sure that women are carried along. But I'm happy to say now we have many of them that are very much interested in joining the polling. In fact, they are part and parcel of us. With some of them are even holding positions All in right. the party and, uh, of course, in the campaigns. We now, don't have time the, again. We are totally out of time. Okay. <laughs> but here is a charter of the man to you. But I didn't which, answer. I have no problem. Unfortunately, we don't have all okay. time to, to, uh, uh, to left again. There is a charter of the man here from the civil society organization, which will be presented to you. And maybe you can sign up to it after this. But I must sincerely thank you and your vice presidential candidate. Thank you so much indeed. This is the first in the series. I must thank NNPP and our partners tonight for partnering with us on this very, very important occasion. Thank you so much indeed, everyone. I'll see you again next time when we take up yet another political party with their flag bearers. Thank you so much, Nigerian. You know your voice counts until that election. When you make that decision, it's bye for me. Bye-bye.
Hello and welcome to a new edition of Eco Africa, DW's environmental magazine. My name is Sandra Twinobio, and today we're going to look at how the sports world is starting to champion environmental causes. That's right, we can all do something to help curb climate change and preserve nature. My name is Chris Alems, great to have you with us. This time we'll be looking at how trash left by tourists is frustrating islanders in Senegal. How activists in Ivory Coast are tackling waste and global warming. And how a traditional irrigation system can save farmers in Tunisia from suffering water shortages. Most of us tend not to associate sports with a drive to beat the climate crisis. But why not? It's all about teamwork, isn't it? The initiative Sports for Future allows athletes and fans to join together to support global environmental projects. How does it work? Let's take a closer look at one German-Nigerian initiative. Soccer brings people together, even across continents. The students of Northern Anang Secondary School in Nigeria have linked up with professional footballers in Germany to help the environment. Climate change is here with us.